Okay, it's me, Mark, from Talk Beliefs, and it's Neil from Reason Now, and you may have noticed a slight absence, but uh, Neil, you weren't feeling that well, were you? No, I had to bail on the show, unfortunately. I've got a bit of a chest infection, so uh, the voice is a little bit broken. We don't want you hacking all over the microphones. <laughs> no, but I'm feeling much better, and the, uh, the uh, antibiotics are doing the job. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hooray for science yet again. So you, you didn't have anyone put their hands on you and offer the Holy Spirit or anything like that? <laughs> no. I, I have people in my family that do that, and they're, they're still coughing now. Okay, <laughs> so... A lot of things have happened. I mean, far too much to uh, really talk about in our little show. Um, but, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, uh, do you know who Billy Graham is? I, I do, unfortunately. Was. Cause I, yeah, was, because I did attend um, one of his visits to the UK in the 1980s when I was still in church. What? You were made to go? Well, actually, I was about 15 at the time and I was in a youth club that was attached to the church and some of the girls were going, so... I wanted to go. Ah, uh, the plot thing. Right, okay. Right, so for anyone who doesn't know, Billy Graham is a, was a, uh, a very, very popular, well-traveled evangelist. He just recently, uh, last week or the week before, died at the age of 99. I believe his son, uh, Franklin, was preparing the big celebration um, for his 100th birthday. And the thing is, Billy Graham has been lauded by President Trump and people like that of being this wonderful person who uh, went over the world, all over the world proclaiming the love of Jesus, doing good things. Um, but when you look into his history, things like his views on women, views on homosexuality, that, that kind of thing, that, that really doesn't hold up too well, does it? No, he wasn't a um, fan of women's rights, uh, a wife, mother and a homemaker. Is a real woman. Uh, I think there was a sort of opinions, and uh, his both his daughters say um, he denied them a higher education. So that was lovely of him. Oh, cool. no! I, hopefully, eventually they rectified that. But um, you know, also, apparently, back in 2012, uh, he took out several full-page ads in the paper when a battle over a proposed constitutional amendment in North Carolina to ban same-sex marriage was put up for a vote. Yes. Uh, so he kept his bigoted opinions to the death, I guess, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. And now his son Franklin is carrying on, and um, I think he, he's worse than, than Billy ever was. Yep. Yeah, Billy was from the era where actually um, religion seemed to have a lot less influence in politics than it was yes. before the Republican Party took over, yes. got taken over by evangelicals. Yeah, now you can imagine perhaps Franklin one day running for president, similar to what Pat Robertson did about 10 or so years ago, or 20 years ago. Um, you can easily imagine that, and the evangelicals will, will put him into power like they did with uh, Trump, who of course is a wonderful man of God. <laughs> I couldn't say that with a straight face, I'm sorry. But um, you know, just because you are a man of God doesn't mean that you do everything by the book, as we will see in our next story, which comes from the New York Post. Actually, th this is all over the place. We're just going to listen to a, a little bit of audio first. Just, just, just tell me what you think of this, Neil. I was counseling a young man with a drug problem, okay, and it did turn strange, but it wasn't my doing, okay, uh, and I, I was adamant that I'm not participating in that way. Sound like somebody who's telling the absolute truth, do you think? Just, just off the bat. Well, I, I presume from his statement, he did absolutely, he's doing absolutely nothing wrong at all, and he's just in a car counselling the young men. Okay, then. Right. Now, <laughs> a pastor says nothing weird was going on with a bound naked man in his car. That's the headline. Well, on second, he said he didn't take any active part in it. Who tied this man up? Uh, well, I don't know. Perhaps... Um, I've heard of escapologists who can get out of those. There, there might have been three people. people. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, the article goes on to say, a Pennsylvania pastor insists he was merely counseling a naked man whom cop... I'm not going to get through this. A naked man whom cops found bound with nylon rope in a parked car on a residential street, saying, uh, I have nothing to hide. And we are working breaking news tonight. A local preacher in trouble with the law charged with committing lewd acts in public view. It's a story you'll see only on KDKA. Amy Wattis talked with that preacher tonight. She joins us now with the latest on that. Amy. 
Well, good evening, Paul. That pastor is accused of engaging in that alleged behavior late last night. In fact, police say someone in the neighborhood spotted the alleged incident going on right outside of his daughter's window and even saw another man get out of the car without any clothes on. If you set your mind on wrong things, you're going to think about wrong things. This is video of George Gregory, the preacher at Waterfront Christian Community Church in West Homestead. I have nothing to hide. I did nothing wrong. According to a criminal complaint, police say they found Gregory and another man in a car on Beachland Street, a public street with several homes in plain view. Inside, police say they spotted a man in the front seat completely naked and bound with nylon rope. Police say Gregory was in the back seat. When police asked him what was going on, they say he told them, quote, we were just playing. Gregory says police have it all wrong. I was counseling a young man with a drug problem, okay, and it did turn strange, but it wasn't my doing, okay, uh, and I, I was adamant that I'm not participating in that way. The man in the front seat told police the behavior was consensual. Police say Gregory stated, quote, they meet up from time to time to play with each other. Church services are held every Sunday at 10 in the morning. When I asked Gregory if he's going to talk to the members of his church, he said, Yeah, I'm going to talk to them tomorrow for sure. Gregory and that other man have been charged with indecent exposure and open lewdness. Gregory was issued a summons. He says he hasn't received that yet. Yeah, I believe him, Neil. He, <laughs> he, he had no part in it whatsoever. No, 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 because um, there was a, a man in the front seat who was being counseled that he spontaneously decided to tie himself up. And he was, uh, Pastor Gregory was in the back seat um, thinking, oh, this is strange. I can't tell you the amount of times I've ended up in the back seat of a car with a stranger naked. I mean, it just happens all the time, obviously. It's, it's one of those, those things, isn't it? Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. I think we better shed some light on this. Okay, so George Nelson Gregory, age 61, was sitting in the back seat of a car parked outside of a house in Homestead when cops responding to a call about a suspicious vehicle spotted a naked man bound with nylon rope in the front seat around 11.30 p.m. A witness told police the naked man got out of the car in full view of his daughter's window. Gregory told the officers that he and the unidentified man were just playing in a consensual setting, adding that they meet up from time to time to play with each other, according to a criminal complaint obtained by the station. But if that was true, why did he say it was none of his doing and it went it went strange and he didn't know what was going on? Yeah, I don't believe it's so for one second that it's none of his doing. So there's Trumpian sort of like two different stories going on. Yeah, and the, the whole the whole he did nothing wrong. I mean, it's ways to look at it. Obviously, people meeting up and doing stuff consensually, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Doing it on a lit high street in a car where people can see you? Yeah. That's maybe something, doing something wrong? Did he want to be seen? I don't, well, it's probably, Did yeah, there, want, I think there is a bit of a that. buzz in that danger thing, yeah. I guess. Um, but, well, he's a hypocrite for sure because he preaches. Well, he, he probably preaches against this, like he said in that clip there, you know, if you're thinking about wrong things, you'll end up doing wrong things. Yeah. So he was obviously thinking about doing wrong things. Well, he's a married man. I mean, we don't know what his marriage situation is, whether his wife knows he does this and he has permission to do it. A, there's a lot of difficult things going on here. But... His flock will believe him. His flock will believe him. Uh, he he <laughs> is obviously lying about some part, at least, because... A man can't tie himself up in a, in a car, and he meets up to play with this man. I don't think even Houdini could tie himself up. <laughs> no, no. So there's, it's it's just the hypocrisy, isn't it? It's it's the people denying their real feelings to themselves and and preaching to yeah, others. Yeah. Um, hate speech, and I'm not saying he preached hate speech because I haven't heard any of his sermons, but generally preaching hate speech about mm. gay people mm. and that, and then the hypocrisy of actually it's just what he wants to do. And quite often they, they take up this vocation of preaching against something which they have urges for themselves um, as a way of, as I, I don't know, as a way of kind of like uh, feeling that they're cleansing themselves of any wrongdoing. Yeah. So, and then, then do you feel sorry for people who have to live a, a lie, basically. Yeah. Um, um, just because of the way they've been brought up and indoctrinated. And that so there's there's many many angles to this one. It's not a simple.
story. It's a funny story. <laughs> he said, um, Gregory said, I won't deny that when he began to take his clothes off and proposition me, it got, it seemed to get a bit strange. But I swear on a stack of Bibles uh, with God as my witness that I did nothing. Now, I know a lot of compulsive liars who say, I swear yeah. on Bibles. <laughs> I, I remember one friend who used to say, I swear on my kid's life. I did honestly see a vampire. You know, that, that kind of level. It's like, to get out of it, they will say whatever they have to say. Yeah, not, that maybe, denials, maybe he is telling the truth. That denial can be so strong. Though, it's all it? alleged, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, they, they're going to receive a summons, aren't they? Yeah, for the lewd behaviour and all that. I don't know if he was actually witness taking part in the lewd behaviour, but the fact that there was a naked man in the front seat, something's going to happen over this, I would imagine. <laughs> and uh, I guess the strange feet, it turned strange um, in his trousers, I would guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, it's not really a terrible, horrible story. We've had a lot of those. Um, it's kind of a fun story, I guess you could say. But uh, I think really um, there's a lot of optimistic stories at the moment. I think that that's what I think we should end the show on. We've got two stories here. Um, this one is, the first one is from TVNZ, a New Zealand website. And the title is, I have a great deal of optimism. And that is from the famous Kiwi atheist, Sir Lloyd Gearing, who celebrates his 100th birthday. How do you know you're God? Simple. When I pray to him, I find I'm talking to myself. <laughs> a Wellington man who famously rejected God has lived to be 100 years old. Former Presbyterian minister, Sir Lloyd Gearing, is the only person to be tried for heresy in New Zealand. Imagine that. He had spoken out publicly in 1967 saying the whole world of the supernatural does not exist anymore. So that's pretty incredible, isn't it? And if you see the video of him, he's walking around like he's a spry youngster of 80. He's, <laughs> he's got all his marbles, he's still talking sense and uh, yeah, he says it was nothing to do with him in New Zealand um, losing its faith, but uh, he was one of the early advocates for uh, atheism and uh, you don't need a god in New Zealand. But isn't there still a blasphemy law down there? There is. There was an attempt to get rid of it last year, so there is a big movement to get rid of it. So um, hopefully they'll be one of the countries that uh, does go. And if anyone doesn't know what a blasphemy law is, that is basically you can get thrown in the slammer if you basically say something about the prevailing God. Yeah. Say something, you know, the religion. Blasphemy. Yeah, it's, it's nonsense. <laughs> like God sucks. Yeah, a lot of countries still have it, unfortunately, <laughs> even though it's not enacted in a lot yeah. of countries, but in others people are thrown in jail regularly. Yeah. Um, it just shows he's, he's lived a ripe old age without God yeah. um, he, and um, still still advocating for living a healthy life and uh, science, reason, yeah. evidence um, and he's a happy man a hundred so it can be done. And uh, you know who agrees with him, or they probably agree with each other, is Steven Pinker. Yes. And Steven Pinker of course is the uh, American psychologist and atheist and humanist. Now this comes from CNN. Never mind the gloom. Now is the best time to be alive. Professor Pinker, welcome to the program. Thank you. So, you know, I sit here and you have been doing the same, just listening and absorbing all this bad news. Certainly this week it has been a catastrophe, listening to what happened about the school shooting in Parkland, in Syria, everywhere you look. But you say we've never had it better. If, if you... Uh don't just concentrate on the things that go wrong. And there are always things that go wrong. We'll never have a perfect world. But if you count up the number of violent incidents, count up the amount of poverty, count up the amount of uh, illiteracy, you see that in many ways this is the best time to be alive. The lifespan has never been longer. It used to be that people could expect to live to about 30 when they were born. Now in the developed world it's 80, in the world as a whole it's 70. The uh, world has achieved a rate of 80% literacy, 90% for, for uh, children. Diseases are in decline. Global uh, extreme poverty has gone from 90% uh, of humanity a couple of hundred years ago to 10% today, with most of the gain just in the last couple of decades. And even peace, the, uh, the wars have not been eliminated, uh, and the, the war in Syria is the worst in a generation. Even with that, the rate of death in warfare now is much less than it was in the uh, 80s, 70s, and 60s. So Stephen Pinker says, as long as the rate of disasters and atrocities doesn't fall to zero, there will always be enough to fill the news, which is true. But the stats on human well-being tell a clear story. And as he just said, if you do look at the stats, and that's important, things are getting exponentially better. Yeah, um, unfortunately we live in a world of 
24 hour news cycle where they're, where they're repeating the news every 15 minutes and they only seem to report the bad news so mm. in our brains we're only receiving bad news so you have to look you have to yourself dig in and find out the reality because we're not being told yeah. it by our press or by our, uh, by our news channels and it's kind of a, a feedback loop isn't it they think people only want to hear bad stuff and then people hear the bad stuff on the news and think this is what I should be listening to because yeah. they're showing me the bad stuff yeah and, it, and it's confirmation bias as well because you believe the bad world's hmm. getting worse or the world's bad and it, it conforms to your existing beliefs so therefore hmm. uh, it, it's easily absorbed yeah, but at least on most news programs, they end on a light note, you know, like something to do with a panda being born or something. But it's like, uh, well, this isn't really important, but we'll just have it at the end, you know, so we can smile a bit. Yeah, so you know. there's a lot of focus on inequality around the world right now. And without a doubt, inequality between the normal working class person and the billionaires is the highest it's ever been. Mm. And there's a lot of focus, all sorts of news stories about that, for example. But what they don't say is actually absolute inequality from the poorest of the poor mm. is the lowest it's ever been yeah it's never been better for the poorest of the poor we've dragged so many people out of abject poverty in the last 20 years it's incredible and that trend looks like it's going to keep continuing um because as uh, our friend andrew copson said when we both interviewed him last uh, last week um, he said that people, generally speaking, they want to have peace, they want to get on with each other, and no matter what happens, people will still come back to that, that desire. Yes, yeah, so you go through the rough times and the desire is to live together well, to, to hope other people have a good life as, as you do, and that is a perennial thing that keeps going around, so we do come back to it, and, and as you say, we take a step forward, and occasionally there's a step backward, but through the last few hundred years, yeah. uh, We've, we've gained massive, massive advantages. Despite the fact that the end of the world is coming up. <laughs> it's you forgot about it, didn't you? Yeah. It's, uh, I forget which one this is, but it's definitely March, so we're going to have to address that, I think, next week. I'm on a high at the moment after listening to Steven Pinker and listening to Lloyd Gearing, so I want to uh, just leave it on that. Shall we do that? Yes. So Go out and enjoy the sunshine. The world's good. The world's getting better. Uh, we we can work to improve the bad things that are happening to make sure they happen less frequently. And, um, and while you're doing that, you can yeah. check out our YouTube channel and check out our interviews with yes. Mr. Andrew Copson. Andrew Copson of Humanists UK. So both you and I did separate interviews, and they're both they're both available. And I thought they went great. Anyway, so I really really he really it. opened up. Uh, we asked him some questions which I don't think he'd ever been asked before about humanism, secularism faith schools, the world in general, and uh, it's, it seems to be very popular, so we're very pleased with that. And, and, he, and he's tweeting it all over the place, so that, that's which is nice. Start. And we're looking forward to getting out and finding new people to interview. Yes, yes, we've got some things in the works. These things are coming, so you have to watch out for those on Talk Leap News. So if you like what you hear, please give us a like and a share. And don't forget, we have a Patreon, so go on over to there. And if you'd like to support us on Talk Beliefs, that would be very, very much appreciated because we love what we do. And we'd be very happy indeed. And you never know, you might get a, a shout out on the show. So, okay, I guess it's time to say over and out. Until next week. <laughs>